Hello students, welcome to my channel Engineers Academy. Uh, let's solve this one another problem from chapter 6 that is on the method of sections, right? So we have to solve this problem by using the method of sections and we are given that the whole truss is subjected to the loading shown and we are required to determine the forces in GF, CD and GC. So we have to determine the force in this GF member, this uh, GC member and this CD member, right? And we have to find that whether these member has the forces in compression or tension, right? So we have to identify that. Uh, so before going to solve this particular problem by using the method of section, we have to we have to find the reactions at point A and E. So for method of section, what we normally do is that we pass a cutting section, right? And that imaginary cutting section need to pass those particular members where, where we are interested to determine the force values, right? So, uh, this imaginary cutting section need to pass through this GF and this, G, uh, this CD which we are interested to find, right? So, if we pass a cutting section like this, then uh, this imaginary cutting section will divide this particular truss into two parts and then for our calculation we can consider we can consider either part of uh, this truss right so we can consider this right hand side of uh, this imaginary cutting section or we can consider this left hand side of this imaginary cutting section right so to solve this problem what i will do is that i will consider uh, this right hand side of this imaginary cutting section for my calculation right so in order to consider this right hand side what we need to do is that we need to determine the reaction at this roller support at this particular point E, right? Uh, for considering this right hand side, there is no need to find the reactions at point A. So what I will do, I will find the reactions at this roller support. So let's say that here we have uh, support E, right, which is acting vertically upward and let's say that at point A, since we have pin joint, so here we will have uh, A, Y and here we will have A, X reaction. But as we can see that all these external forces are acting along the vertical direction. Let's say that this is our positive X and this is our positive Y direction. So all the external forces are acting in the downward direction, that is in the negative Y direction. So this means that the A, X reaction will be equal to zero if we apply the summation of forces if we apply the summation of forces along x to this whole truss, then there is only a x reaction which is acting in the x direction. So, this means that in other words, we can say that this a x reaction will be equal to 0. So, there is no horizontal reaction at point A, right? Then since we are interested to find this uh, roller support reaction, so what we can do is that we can apply the summation of moment at point A equals to 0 since the whole truss is in equilibrium, right? So, if we apply this equation, then the reactions at point A will not come into our equation and we will be able to find the reaction at the roller support, that is this E reaction. So, if we apply the summation of moment about point A equals to 0, so as we can see that this E is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point A, so I will write plus E and the moment arm of this E from that point A is the summation of all these, right? So, this is 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So, we have a 8 meters distance, right? So, we, we have to multiply that 8, the moment arm with this E. Similarly, uh, we can see that this 5 kilonewton force is producing the clockwise moment about that point A. So, I will write minus 5 and the perpendicular distance of this 5 kilonewton force from that point A is 2 meters, right? So, we will multiply this with 2. Similarly, this 5 kilonewton is also producing the clockwise moment about that point A. So, I will write minus 5 and the perpendicular distance of this 5 kilonewton force from that point A is 4 meters. So, I will multiply this with 4. Similarly, this 5 kilonewton force is again producing the clockwise moment. So, you will write minus 5 and the perpendicular distance or the moment arm of this 5 kilonewton force from that point A is 2 plus 2 plus 2. So, this is 6. So, you have to multiply this with 6. And similarly, this 2 kilonewton force is also producing the clockwise moment. So, I will write minus 2 and the perpendicular distance of this 2 kilonewton force from that point A is 8 meters. So, I will multiply this with 8. And similarly, here this 2 kilonewton force, the line of action of this 2 kilonewton force is passing through that point A. So, it will not be able to produce the moment about that point A, right? 
so we will equate all these equal to 0 right so we can write it like this I can write that this is 8 e I can take 5 common from all of these right so I can write that this is minus 5 and this will be 2 plus 4 plus 6 and this will be minus 16 and this is equal to 0. Now, if we bring both of these terms to the other side of equations, so they will become positive right. So, we will have the equation like this and if we divide both side of equation by 8, so we will get the value of the roller support right. So, this E comes out to be uh, 9.5 kilo Newton since all the forces are in kilo Newton right. So, this is the roller support at that point E. So, now we can write that this is our roller support which is 9.5 kilo Newton right. Now, after this we will assume an imaginary cutting section like this and we will consider this right hand side of this imaginary cutting section for our analysis right. So, we will have this as our free body diagram. So, this will be my uh, a GF member force, this will be my GD member force and this will be my CD member force and we will have this as a free body diagram right. So, we are interested to find this FGF, this FCD right. So, to determine this first we have to draw that uh, E force that roller support which is acting at this particular point and the value of this roller support we have just determined is 9.5 kilo Newton. Now, to determine this uh, GF member force what we need to do is that we need to take the moment the summation of moment about point D. Since both of these unknowns are passing through this point D, so they will not come into our equation right. So, we can write that we can apply the summation of moment about point D equals to 0 right. Since this both of these are not known right they are unknown. So, they will not come into our equation right. So, if I apply the summation of moment about this point D, so we have to resolve this uh, FGF into its components right, it will have two components, it will have one component like this and it will have one component in the upward direction like this, it will have one component like this and it will have one component which will be acting vertically upward right. So, then we have to find this angle of FGF right. So, we can find the this angle and this angle both both of these angles are uh, similar right. So, we have to find this angle theta right. So, to find this angle theta we can use this large triangle this GCE triangle right. So, from this GCE triangle we can apply tan theta. So, tan theta will be equal to this GC member length which is 3 and this C E length right which is 4 right. So, this will give us theta this is 10 inverse 3 divided by 4. So, 10 inverse 3 divided by 4 gives us 36.87 degrees right. So, I will write that this is 36.87 degrees. So, this F G F member is making 36.87 degrees with the horizontal right. So, then this one will be the pass component right and this component is not producing the moment about that point D. So, I will erase it right. This one is the we can write that this is F G F cause of 36.87 right. So, now if we apply the summation of moment about point D. So, as we can see that this cause component is producing the counterclockwise moment about this point D. So, I will write plus this will be F G F cause of 36.87 multiply by the moment arm which is this the length of this uh, F D member and the length of this F D member is not known directly. So, we have to find this right. So, to find the length of this F D member what we can do is that we can consider both of these triangles one this large triangle and one this small triangle and we can apply the properties of similar triangles right. So, we can write that since uh, this G C E triangle and this F D E triangle both of these triangles are similar triangles. So, the ratios of the corresponding sides will be equal right. So, we can say that F D length 
divided by this DE length which is 2 meter, this will be equal to this GC length which is 3 divided by this CE length which is 4, right. So, the, the length of that FD member will be equal to 3 divided by 4 into 2. So, this gives us 1.5 meters, right. So, this FD member length is 1.5 meters which is the moment arm of this cost component. So, we will multiply this with 1.5, right. Similarly, this 5 kN force is passing through that point D, so it will not produce the moment about that point D, right. And this 2 kN force is producing the clockwise moment about that point D, so I will write minus 2 and the perpendicular distance of this 2 kN force from that point D is the length of this DE member which is 2 meters, so I will multiply this with 2. Similarly, this roller support is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point D, so I will write plus and this is 9.5 and the perpendicular distance of this roller support from the point D is again the length of this DE member which is 2 meters. So, I will multiply this with 2 and this will be equal to 0. So, we can find that FGF uh, like this. So, this will be this will, the, both of these will be the signs of both of these terms on the other side of the equation will become opposite right. So, we can write that this will be 4 and this will be minus 9.5 into 2 divided by this 1.5 cos of 36.87. So, this gives us uh, F G F minus 12.5. So, F G F is equal to minus 12.5 kilo Newton. And again, the, since we have assumed that all these unknowns are acting away from their corresponding joints, so this means that we have assumed that all of these unknowns are the tension forces, right. But here we got the negative sign, so the negative sign means that this FGF force is not the tension force, it is the compressive force, right. So, we can write that the magnitude of this FGF is 12.5 kilo Newton and it is compressive force, right. Now, we are required to find this FCD member force, right. So, in order to determine this FCD, uh, if we apply the summation of moment about point G equals to 0. Since this FGF and this FCD, they are the line of action of both of these forces are passing through that point G. So, to apply this equation, they will not come into our equation and we will be only left with this FCD member force, right. So, now if I apply the summation of moment about point G equals to 0, so as we can see that uh, this FCD is producing the clockwise moment about that point G. So, I will write minus FCD and the perpendicular distance of this FCD from that point G is this distance, right. We can draw the moment arm of this FCD like this, which will be the length of this GC member and that is 3 meters. So, I will multiply this with 3. Similarly, this 5 kN force is producing the clockwise moment about that point G. So, I will write minus 5 and the perpendicular distance of this 5 kN force from that point G is this distance which is the length of this CD. So, we have to multiply it by 2, right. Similarly, this 2 kN force is producing the clockwise moment about that point G. So, I will write minus 2 and the perpendicular distance of this 2 kN force from that point G is the length of this CE, both of these members which is 4 meters. So, I will multiply this with 4 and similarly, this uh, roller support is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point G. So, I will write plus and this E is 9.5 and the perpendicular distance of this roller support from that point G is again 4 meters. So, I will multiply this with 4 and this will be equal to 0. So, we can find it like this. So, this will be 5 into 2, this will be plus 2 into 4 minus 9.5 into 4 divided by minus 3. So, this gives us FCD equals to 6.67, right. So, we can write that this FCD equals to 6.67 kilo Newton. And since the sign is positive, so this means that the assumed direction for this FCD force is accurate, 
So this means that this is acting away from that joint D which means that it is the tension force. Now we have determined this FGF member force and this FCD member force. Now we are required to find that GC member force, right? So now if I consider the joint C, right? And if we apply the method of joints, so let's say this is that joint C and FCD force is the tension force. So it will be acting away at joint C as well, right? So this will be that FCD. And let's say that uh, here we will have that FBC force and let's say that that FBC force is acting away from this joint C as well. This is that FBC and let's say that FGC force is also acting away from this joint C like this, right? So this is FGC. So now if we consider this joint C and if we apply the summation of forces along Y equals to 0. So as we can see that only that GC member force is acting in the Y direction, right? And there is no other force uh, along the Y axis, right? So this means that the summation of FGC, the summation of all forces along Y is equal to 0 and that means that FGC member force is 0 since there is no other force in the Y direction, right? So this concludes that uh, this GC member is the 0 member, right? And so the, the FGC force is equal to 0, right? So that FGF uh, member force is 12.5 kN and it is compressive. That FCD member force is 6.7 kN force and it is the tension force and that FGC force is equal to 0. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope you people would have understood this particular problem. Kindly subscribe my channel if you want me to solve such more problems.